how's it going guys bhd t2 trek fin 88 here i look like job of the hot here um i'm not driving my jeep i'm actually driving my dad's car to save on gas and whatnot plus i'm having an issue with my rear brakes apparently what i've been experiencing like i don't stop when i should like i have to put my pedal to the floor not to the floor about halfway to the floor before i start to really <clears throat> excuse me before i really start to slow down so when I got my shocks installed, I had them look at it, and it turns out the um, the rear adjusters are frozen. So as the brakes have worn down, as tension has become a little bit looser, because things don't always stay super tight, I guess they're not adjusting, which is an explanation for why when I'm in the parking lot at work, right, and I'm going like five miles an hour and I go to stop, just at, the, at an intersection before I pull off of the thing, whatever, my rear tires will, will lock up. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, so that's probably what that is. It's probably he said that they were loose. Um, so what's happening, I think, is I'm going to stop, and the rear brakes aren't making contact with the with the rear brake drum because they're drum brakes. So as soon as I keep pushing my foot to the floor, all of a sudden, boom! It's not like it's gradual. It's like it's a sudden, like if you were to slam on the brakes normally. And that's why my rear wheels, not all the time, but sometimes I'll skid a little bit. And it's like, what the fuck? That's really bad. Uh, another reason why I'm driving the car is because we're having a fucking huge rainstorm right now. So that's really bad if I'm on the highway and I go to stop. My rear end will lock up. Uh, so anyway, the purpose of this video is not to talk about the Jeep. Uh, I'm on my way uh, to get some goddamn food because I'm hungry. But I'm on my way to go see the Iron Giant. Uh, it's its 20th, I think it is. 20th anniversary, 1995, yeah, 20th anniversary, I think, um, great, great movie, I watched it when I was a kid, I love science fiction, I love the artist, the, the style of the artwork in the film, it's almost like, um, noir, and, uh, I can't think of the other terms, but if you've seen The Iron Giant, you know what I'm talking about, so, Fandango, and whatever the hell, I forget, uh, they're doing a one-time screening, it's not like one of those, it's today, and then a couple days from now, if it was a couple days from now, I would have done it after work, um, instead of going up here on my day off, but, um, it's a one-time showing, it's at 7 p.m. across different parts of the country, uh, in their time zones, and, uh, you know what, for 10 bucks, I'll, I'll go see that movie, it's the signature edition, apparently, uh, they've gone back and cleaned up the print, um, they haven't changed anything, like some movies, but they've cleaned up the print, and, uh, they've added a couple extensions to scenes, they've reworked the audio, so it's, like, real awesome sound, I, uh, we'll find out, I'll, I'll film a, uh, my response afterwards, um, but, you know, my friends are like, oh, why would you go, why would you go see a movie that you've seen before when you were, when you were a kid, and I'm like, because it's something to do, it's my day off, it's ten bucks, it's not that far away, it's a good movie, if, you, if you're a fan of science fiction or anything for that matter, uh, animation, Vin Diesel, of course, it's one of his first roles, he, uh, well, not one of his first, but one of his big, uh, you know, things that led him to go do other stuff in life, uh, and when it comes to his acting career, uh, I hate talking while I'm driving, because I can't express what I really want to, but you get the idea, um, so, yeah, I, I like The Iron Giant, I, I, I really do, it's one of my favorite animated movies, probably up there with a goofy movie and, uh, Rescue Rangers Down Under, um, animated films, not just... Um, you know, like Pixar, like animation, so, anyway, I'll probably film a video afterwards with my reactions, and, uh, we'll go from there, later. What's going on, guys? I know you really can't see me, I'll make this quick, um, just got out of the film, and I gotta say, this, this movie really holds up, uh, I was way off on my timing, by the way, it's, uh, um, it wasn't 20 years, it was like 16 or something like that, anyway, it been a while, you know, and I've seen this movie quite a few times, to be honest with you, um, it's on my computer, I watched it like a few months ago, kind of skimmed through it, um, but, um, no, I liked it, I, I thought the presentation was great, they, I guess, again, they, it really does show that they went back and redid it, um, I'll be honest, I was blown away by the audio, uh, you know, I have a good sound system, I've seen this movie before, but when the Iron Giant walks, his footsteps, let me tell you something, <laughs> holy shit, uh, you know, when he, when he falls backwards, when he's talking to Hogarth, um, it, it was pretty solid, you know, there's not so much I can say about it, if you haven't seen the movie, please, please rent it, 
uh, download it, buy it, whatever you have to do. So I'm not going to really talk about the film itself. If you've seen it, you know what's, what happens in the film. But uh, it was it was pretty solid. Um, you know, the, the video, uh, the audio, everything about this was just, it, it holds up very well. Uh, I was trying to figure out they, in the beginning of the movie, before it started, uh, Brad Bird, the director, great director, by the way, he uh, he said, you know, hey, thanks for watching, thanks for coming out to a theater to see this movie. That's 16 years old, whatever. Um, he, said, he specifically said there were two rather small, but what he felt very important scenes that helped with the story, and unlike other films where they add scenes just to add them, he felt that these should have been in, but they were cut blah, blah, blah. So, okay, I, I, I was, I'm racking my brain here to try and figure out what scenes were installed, and I haven't seen, again, I skimmed through it. I haven't watched it all the way through in a while. I think I know one of them was, uh, there's a scene where the, uh, I'm just calling the giant, the Iron Giant is dreaming, and, uh, he's dreaming about what he actually is, which is indeed a weapon, and they show, like, this foreign alien planet, which is like a futuristic, you can tell by the buildings and stuff that it's not like humanity's level of development, but you see like 50 fucking iron giants all marching in, in a row, laying waste to everything, and I sat there like, holy shit, what the fuck, like, cool, but at the same time, you realize, wow, this, this thing means business, um, and uh, he's, he, he's remembering like what he's done when he saw the dead deer, blah, 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 and so then that scene happens, and I think there's an extension of Hogarth talking to the robot about death, and how the robot, you know, after the scene with the deer, he's like, you know, you, you die, or I'll die one day, and the robot's like, you know, you, and he goes, yeah, and the robot asks if he'll die, and Hogarth goes, I don't know, you're a robot, but, you know, you're metal, but you have a soul, and it brings up you know, where do people go when they die, and it's about a four-minute scene, and it's good, I can kind of see why they cut that, because it's a little deep, especially for a kid's movie back in the day, um, but, uh, other than that, um, not much I can say, I enjoyed it, um, as you can hear, or I should say, as you heard from the beginning of this video, you know, I do like to record audience reactions at the end of the film, and of course, um, about 150 people at most, uh, it, I wouldn't say it was packed. It wasn't packed. But if you've, if you've been to a Regal Theater, you know that they usually have the upper, you know, two-thirds of the theater and then the bottom third. And I would say the bottom third was a quarter full, but the, uh, the, the top third, the top two-thirds were pretty eh, two-thirds full. So I, I call, it, call it half a theater worth of people. It was a decent showing for being a uh, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., not really advertised that well, you know, event. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm happy I went and saw it in theaters. I haven't seen the movie all the way through in a while, so, you know, being able to sit there with an audience and laugh, and because there are some pretty funny moments in that movie. Um, but I, I, I would say I'm happy I saw it. You know, I'm very happy that I'm more aware of these films that are getting re-released. You know, Jaws... Back to the Future, that's another thing. Back to the Future Part 2 will be in theaters on August 21st, October 21st, 2015. Kind of have to go to that. Fuck. Uh, more money I'm going to be spending on that film. But um, I also have to request the evening off to do that. But anyway, Iron Giant Signature Edition. Excellent audio, excellent video presentation. I don't know how it was if you were watching this and you saw it at your theater, but it was it was pretty kick-ass. Uh, and it's, it's not a movie that is meant to be, oh my god, but there are moments that you appreciate having a decent sound, uh, th sounding theater, or home theater system for that matter. One thing I did like, but I kind of wish they did more, is at the beginning I told you how Brad Bird talked to you, uh, and he's very, clearly very appreciative of fans of the film, which is good, because a lot of directors kind of take them for granted. Oh, Quentin Tarantino, um, and a few others, but at the end, he's like, okay, st stay till the end of the credits, because they're going to show a snippet, a preview of the documentary that's going to be on the Signature Series Blu-ray, which will be released on October 5th. And it literally, it was a quick snippet, but I have a feeling that's going to be a really cool documentary to see. It was about five minutes, 
it's supposed to be like a half hour or an hour documentary, but five minutes of it, just a preview, just a snippet. But uh, you, you, in that four or five minutes, you really get the feeling, kind of like when you watch documentaries on Pixar films now, like of Finding Nemo and The Incredibles and Toy Story, how the people who animate them really, really are into it and they're really excited about it, which is nice to see because a lot of stuff nowadays is taken for granted. But the one thing that really caught my eye and really made me appreciate the film even more, uh, in the beginning, Brad, you know, talks about why this film was special, because, even, you know, back even in, what, 98, 99, whatever, whatever year, uh, I think it was 99, um, you know, everything now, as great as Pixar films are, and I'll be honest, I like Pixar films, I love Pixar films, who doesn't? I, I grew up where my generation was the first one to have a completely CG film, Toy Story, back in 95. But he talks about how you know, he respects him, but when you create an animated character in the computer, there's nothing there. It, it's, it's data. It's ones and zeros. When you animate something, when you make an animated film or a cartoon or a short, especially the people who draw it, you know, they know for a fact that, and I think his words were something like, there is no other copy of this right now. It's just this. I made this. It's a physical character. Granted, there might be imperfections, which, and again, like he said, imperfections kind of add charm to it. You know, everything in a Pixar film, as detailed and as wonderful looking as it is, is perfect. There's no issues. There's no problems. All, all the lines are straight. But, and this is where I kind of really agree with him, you know, with, with an animation piece... It, you can tell it was done by hand. It was done by a person. These are literally... You're, when you watch the movie, yes, it's a digital copy. Yes, it's a disc or a, you know, a tape or a vinyl for music. You know, it's, it's a reproduction. But you know that the film, when it was made, there was a physical piece that was drawn by hand by a human being. And that's not to say that, you know, when you work with CG, that's not an artist taking their time using their talents. I, I still respect artists of all kind, but there was something, is something special about an actual animated piece, whatever that may be. Um, anyway, I, I did appreciate that, and after he, after I watched that, after hearing him talk, and as he's talking about this, and I'm not doing it justice, but I'm sure you'll see the clip online somewhere, you know, they're showing, you know, I, I'm not an animator, but they're showing the sheets where, you know, you hold one sheet and you pull it up, and it's the character moving ever so slightly because that's what it takes to, to make, you know, a drawing come to life. But it, it really made me appreciate a film like this even more. Especially when you think about movies that came out when this film came out. Uh, 1999, that, that, that's, uh, you know, post-Matrix. Um, I'm really drawing a blank right now just because I'm, I'm kind of tired. Hey guys, I did, I'm, uh, I'm interrupting myself here, but... Um, I just wanted to say another thing about the film. I mentioned earlier how, you know, the audio was done and, and the video presentation was great. One thing about um, this film and why I've always appreciated it, even since I was a kid, the animation in this film is, it's just different. It reminds me of the old school Superman or Man of Steel cartoons from, I honestly couldn't tell you the date, like the one where he stops the train from crashing, whatever. but it, I, I'm not going to call it Art Deco. I, I honestly can't remember the type of art it is, but it's just a very beautifully well done film. I mean, I'm looking at the scenes on the big screen, and like the scene where Hogarth is, you know, just up on the giant's shoulder or in his hand, and you see the forests uh, of, of Maine or the, you know, the town, uh, which I think was the other deleted scene I wasn't thinking of was a scene where he's going to go towards the, the Rockland, main, the main city, and uh, he's like, no, you can't go there. People will freak out. But it's just, you know, I love audio. I'm a huge audio fan, but seeing this film on the big screen, it really gave me a, a, a newer appreciation of, kind of like I was saying before, the artwork, the design of the film. Uh, and I, I think it's a film that, it's not going away anytime soon. You know, it's 19 years old or 16, whatever. I can't fucking do that. Well, it was 2015 and it was 99, so it's 16. It's 16 years old. It's not exactly, you know, old, but it, it holds up. It held up very well. Uh, I just, it's, it's just one of those films where my, I'm driving, I'm tired. I can't really 
say what I mean, but I think you get the idea. I think you get what I'm trying to say. Um, it's just, it's one of those films, and I know I say that a lot. I'm a big movie buff, you know, I, people go, oh, it's one of my favorites. And, you know, if I say it's one of my favorites, chances are it's one of, like, 50. I mean, I'm just one of those guys that when people think of a favorite movie or two, that's it. I mean, there's a lot of movies that I've seen multiple times, never get bored with, and this is one of them. This is, it's a special film as far as I'm concerned. Anyway. But just think of all the films and all the computer animation that, at the time, audiences were really already used to and, and took for granted. So for an animated film to come out with, you know, it had some CG elements to it, but nothing, nothing major like you see nowadays. It, it makes me really wish the film did better and was recognized more. Now, granted, it, it has a cult following. There's a lot of, I mean, hello, this theater wasn't barren like I thought it would be. I hoped it wouldn't be barren, but I thought I would be one of the few people in there. But no, it was pretty solid, pretty packed. And I, what I really liked was I saw a lot of, you know, parents bringing their kids uh, of all ages. So maybe it was the first time that they were watching it, you know. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now and get back to driving uh, or paying attention while driving. Uh, if you saw the film uh, tonight with me or, you know, like with me, but, uh, you know, at the same time, comment below. What did you think? Did you like the added scenes? Did you... Uh, not like them, did you think that this was fun, etc., or if you have, maybe you didn't see it tonight, but maybe you've seen it before, what do you think of it, do you agree with me, do you respect the film, etc., uh, running out of things to say, but, uh, have a good night, guys, later, Superman.